Okay. He was young, but it didn't seem like a big deal because he was incredibly smart and very mature. We started chatting as we both worked the same temp job one day, removing staples from papers for Citibank's industrial shredders. <laughs> he was wise, funny, he was into world politics, he referenced the hoodoo gurus for God's sake, and he read Milton during his lunch hour. I didn't know any fellow Gen Xers, any people who were this cool. Who was I to consider myself above somebody when we were, after all, working the exact same temp job at Shredders? And who cares when you become Facebook friends? That's just a natural progression, right? That's, you know, you don't want to be rude and turn a person down for that request. Especially when you're new to LA, as I was, trying to meet people, trying to make some connections, any connections. The thing was, I never looked through Craig's Facebook profile. Maybe I didn't want to see any obvious clues to his age. Uh, I've always had younger friends and boyfriends, but I'm at an age now where that doesn't seem acceptable anymore. <laughs> so she knows. Um, <laughs> so we'd converse back and forth uh, in private messages, and somehow we were hanging out virtually and trading suggestions on music and websites, things you do when you're first making a friend and getting into it, superficially. I was having fun. And I hadn't really been having fun so far in LA, having to work temp jobs that brought no security, not really meeting people except producers through filmmaking groups on Meetup and creepy bozos in my neighborhood bars. So it felt good to have fun. And what kept me rationalizing my communications with this younger guy was the knowledge that he had a girlfriend. So, you know, he's not chasing after me and I'm not flirting with him, we're just friends. So it's acceptable and definitely not skeevy for me to be associating with him. <laughs> Our ages didn't come up, I was glad for it. Even though nothing would probably ever happen between us, there was a little spark, which is always nice. It's still just nice to feel attractive, to feel cool, to feel that an awesome young guy sees value in you. You, who moved to the most youth-centric place in America in your 30s. Uh, eventually, he invited me to go to a concert with him, his girlfriend, and some other friends. Okay, a group, seems pretty safe. I would not feel like a predator. <laughs> we would take a two-hour drive to Del Mar to see the Flaming Lips. A Flaming Lips show would soothe all my anxieties. Forget being the lonely new person in an unforgiving city and a crushingly small studio apartment. Everything floats away in the uplifting experience that is a Flaming Lips concert. Pure joy as they wail about the wonders of the universe and as they rain confetti and balloons all over your face in an orgasmic musical money shot. <laughs> I have t-shirts, every album, and autographed posters. A framed photo of me clinging a little too tightly to lead singer Wayne Coyne after having stood in line for four hours to meet him. This sort of fandom understanding translates into how all good fans should dress for a lips show. We prepare for a cosmic love fest freakout. We're new people in a new world. You try to leave old you behind. When Craig comes to pick me up, I'm expecting him to be outfitted in some sort of alien Easter Bunny getup. But as I get into the car, knocking my purple glittered dealy boppers on the roof, batting my oversized rainbow tinted false eyelashes, I notice that he's wearing the Argyle and corduroy, corduroy ensemble of a Connecticut vacationer. <laughs> he laughs at me and only says, wow, nice. <laughs> we make our first stop to pick up his friend Bobby. With fuzzy hair flopping in the wind of the open car windows, Bobby spouts pseudo-radical ideas about politics, sex, and drugs, it's the rehashed personal manifesto of every generation of newly liberated youth that justifies their kinky activities to their now conservative parents. 
Bobby and Craig together with their 70s Harvard thrift store style and exuberant idealism remind me of my past days with my friends. They're an engaging, intelligent duo, out to have fun and to leave their mark, but not quite sure how to on either count. As we drive along, I'm trying to figure out, how old is this duo? I don't want to just ask, because I don't want the question asked of me in return. <laughs> At the time, I'm 35. I won't lie if I'm asked. I'm hoping they're 24, 25 if I'm lucky. It's like the difference between a 17-year-old and an 18-year-old to someone in their 20s, but without the issue of legality. <laughs> it's social acceptability. That's why I'm feeling so out of place. It's different working a job with somebody, chatting with them online, and then just being in a car with them on a road trip. You know, it's like the way you feel when you finally go on a date with your favorite barista. You thought you'd won the prize, but it just doesn't feel the same when you see them out of uniform. <laughs> I, I am painfully aware of the differences in our wardrobes, and our wardrobes should be reversed. We make a second stop to pick up Craig's girlfriend. I was looking forward to this. What would Kayla look like? Would she be a manic pixie dream girl interrupted? A Zoe Deschanel lookalike? A Peter Pan collar with heavy bangs and, a big, and big black rimmed glasses? A boho Mary Kate Olsen? Or is it Ashley Olsen? Or is it the other Olsen? Whichever one dresses really sloppy but still cool but does not hunch over. I, it takes me a few seconds as she gives Craig a kiss, says hello to Bobby, and introduces herself to me to process it. What I'm seeing before me all falls into place. A big house, two cars in the driveway, one of them is a minivan, her hair is pulled back with a barrette, and when she smiles at me, she has braces that twinkle in the sun. This bitch is still in high school. <laughs> Bobby drives, I'm in the passenger seat, and Craig and Kayla ride in the back, telling us all about the upcoming prom. They talk about cummer buns and after parties, and I sit politely nodding and smiling, saying things like, oh, that'll be cool. And, oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> and I check my purse, making sure I brought my pill case filled with my nightly Zantac and Osteo Biflex. <laughs> Craig and Kayla begin whispering sweet nothings to each other's ears, and Bobby breaks the front seat silence, maybe because he can sense my discomfort. <laughs> I gotta stay hydrated, too, with my medicine. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you were able to come out today. This is rad, he says. I just smiled and exhaled air. <laughs> Look, I know you're older than us. I mean, Craig had told me you were kind of older, but he thinks you're really cool, and he thought I would think so too. And I totally do. So I just want you to know it's not a big deal, okay? I don't care at all. It didn't occur to me until right then that I might have been set up on a double date. <laughs> he goes on to reassure me, telling me that even though Kayla's 17, she is about to graduate, and that Craig is 21, and he's 22, and that none of them consider people's ages a big deal. We're kind of a lot older than most people our age anyway. You know what I mean. And with this, he smiles at me as if I should now consider myself comforted. I figure he's probably dying to know, so I go ahead and spill it. I'm 35. He nods. I don't know why anybody gives a shit about it anyway. It's just a number. And then he goes on to talk about Republicans and climate change and Walt Whitman and graphic novels and quantum physics. And Craig and Kayla whisper in the back, and I go on pouting a little. On Facebook, I commanded Craig's attention. I could craft perfect responses. Out here, 
in this fucking gross ass pre-owned Toyota Tercel. I was the 35 year old getting ignored, but getting a strange come on slash pity speech from a young wannabe hippie. I am told a little while later that we'll be making a brief detour on our way to the show. Bobby just needs to make a quick stop at his mother's house. <laughs> Which turns out to be a 40 minute detour to the heart of Temecula. <laughs> and when we get there, I say, should I just wait here? Craig tells me I might wanna come in because we'll probably be there for a few minutes. Not long, he says, but Bobby just needs to make an appearance. It's his grandma's birthday party. She'd be mad if he didn't come. <laughs> we walk up to the door and Bobby rings the bell. A dog barks inside and the sound of laughter rings through the house. Suddenly Kayla says to me, oh, I meant to tell you earlier, I love your fake lashes, they're so cute. I had forgotten about them. I had even forgotten about my purple glitter dealy boppers aimlessly floating above my head. And as the sound of footsteps draws nearer, I swipe the headband off and stuff the dealy boppers into my purse, leaving the growing gloom cloud over my head to rain a slight glitter drizzle as we enter the house. While Bobby Craig and Kayla may have been totally progressive about age differences, a group of family members looking at a 35-year-old in rainbow lashes hanging out with their kids were most certainly not. With each, and who is this? I withdraw more to avoid the family's, oh, you say you just met Bobby? Questions and stares. I try to keep myself occupied by playing with or even just looking at their dog the whole time. <laughs> Finally, we make it to the venue. We meet up with more of their friends, the last three remaining people of our group, and they will be graduating with Kayla in a couple months. <laughs> all in all, it really is a good group of people. They're funny. And honestly, I'm a bit threatened because I feel like they're much more intelligent and aware about a lot of issues than I am. If my friends from back home had come with me, we would have spent an unjustifiable amount of time bitching about our relationships, our jobs, our families. And when we got too frustrated with those topics, we might have gone on to talk about the political issues that directly affect us before eventually melting away in puddles of emotional tears during Flaming Lips songs in between our grumblings about the sound being overmodulated. <laughs> These kids, they spend their time talking about their debate society, global economics, world religions, culling online content and informational podcasts, and they kiss their boyfriends and hold their girlfriends' hands. They're nerds, hipsters, musicians who practice their instruments. I was, it, it, they remind me of high school when I was in it, only elevated. Suddenly I hate myself for not being more studious and proactive my entire life. I hate my elementary and high school education for not being better. I hate scientists and inventors for not giving me the same tools and technology, the same high-level brain functioning that these kids have. Because obviously, the fact that internet usage wasn't widespread until the mid-90s is what has made younger generations snazzier and me a piece of shit. <laughs> I can only take comfort in knowing that when this crew reaches my age, they will be as bitter as I am towards a newer generation. The concert starts and I can't even pay attention and relax and be happy. I really want to. My idol, Wayne Coyne, is up there, and he's so beautiful. <laughs> and Bobby and Craig are making sparkling jokes about their love for him, too. I don't know how to deal with the emotion storm that's building. There's a woman around my age who is being really belligerent, really drunk, had shoved her way in front of us and is carelessly bumping into Kayla just because she can, not out of enjoyment or abandonment, but out of a want for attention. Seems there's always one of those. And because Kayla is a small, shy teenager and because Craig is a modern guy and doesn't believe in fighting his girlfriend's battles, she's getting knocked around like a pinball. I try to politely intervene. Excuse me, could you move over a little bit? You're pushing into my friend here. And it doesn't work. 
It's like I'm not three feet away, speaking loudly right next to her. It's like I don't exist. So as she keeps hip checking around, a mild altercation ensues. Hey, we were here first. Can't you just back off a little? Why don't you shut up, whore? You know, the usual concert banter. <laughs> and my group looks on. Wow, there it goes. Uh, her flat ironed hair swings across tastefully exposed cleavage as her French manicured nails curl around a beer cup. And she yells at me even more. Nice lashes, what are you, 15? At that moment, I realize I still have my dealy boppers in my purse. I'd been so happy when I bought them, and here I am struck with the desire to put them on, yet I don't. Instead, as the woman muscles her way forward, I stand there and weep a little, and then I pretend it's because of the song we're hearing. I even lean over to Bobby and say, this is my favorite song of theirs, it tears me up. My lashes are starting to come unglued at the corners from my tears. I'm jealous, I'm sad. And as much as I wanted to lose myself in the show, in the joy, in the freedom of losing myself, I couldn't. I was imploding. I was freaking out. I was medicated. I was old. I didn't have my grandparents anymore. My dogs were dead. I was lonely, stupid, weak, overlooked. I was shredding. When it's over and we head back to the car, Craig, Bobby, and Kayla are running and jumping on a concert high. We get in the car and I laugh at Craig's joke that I don't hear. I pull my dealy boppers out from my purse and put them on and stick my head out the window as we get on the freeway. They flail wildly in the wind. I'm a comet leaving a trail of glitter dust in the night sky. Children are so good at playing pretend. Thank you. Woo!